Hi class, it's Bill Berry here with a week 9 demo on interfaces. We've already had a couple of videos this week on some very important topics. In fact, let's do a quick review of what we know about object-oriented programming given what we've already done in the two uh, previous videos. First of all is we learned about inheritance. So we created a superclass and then we created subclasses and we saw that the behaviors that were defined in the superclass were inherited in the subclass and could be used there. We also saw that subclasses could add data and we used uh, the overrides to do several interesting things and then later we also learned it was okay to call the superclasses method as well. So not only can you override it but you can, uh, you can build on what behaviors were provided in the superclass. So that was pretty cool. Second thing, <clears throat> we learned about overrides, which we just talked about briefly, and that was changing the behavior in a subclass. Third thing, polymorphism, which really comes out of those other two things, which basically says that whatever method is the right one for that class will get run, and it doesn't matter what kind of object reference you're using. So you can use a superclass reference or a subclass reference, it doesn't matter. It'll make sure that the right method that is, is always run based on the type of object that it is. So that was useful stuff to know. Then we covered abstracts. So we saw a case, we made a case, where you could have a superclass that was marked abstract so that you couldn't instantiate an object of that type. So in our uh, particular example, there was a person class, but a person class doesn't mean anything. It's really there only to be inherited from. So we marked that abstract so you can't instantiate a person. And that was useful. Then we also saw that abstract methods can be declared, where the superclass can say, you know, I don't really know how the subclasses are going to want to do this. It's up to them. It's important that they do it. So I'm just going to provide the method header. I'm not going to provide any kind of body, and I'm going to mark the method as abstract. So we will force the subclasses the concrete classes to create these methods before they uh, will compile correctly. So that was a lot of stuff and there's a lot behind this. You'll need a lot of practice with objects before all of this will settle into your brain. So that's quite a review. Now we're going to stretch our brains a little bit more beyond that. Why is that? Well, Inheritance is a great thing, and there are many cases where inheritance and having a hierarchy of inherited uh, super and subclasses makes perfect sense, but it is not a solution to everything. There are cases, and the book goes over one, where uh, you can try to fit stuff into that model that really doesn't make sense. You can end up with uh, finding that you really don't want the behaviors of the superclass. You have the superclass just as a sort of placeholder because you're sort of, sort of forcing things to fit together, but you realize that the behaviors really don't make sense to be passed down. So you may run into cases like that where what you really wanted was to say, hey, you know what? I really would like a certain set of behaviors to be present in a class. It would support something that I want to do, but putting things into an inheritance model doesn't necessarily make sense. Now, the two things can actually work together. So you can put some things into this inheritance model that we've seen so far, and other things you can do with this other method that we're going to learn about, which is called an interface. And an interface says, look, I want to be able to provide certain kinds of things to depend on certain kinds of behaviors being present. If you do that, then I can use this object in a particularly cool way, and so I'm going to declare an interface, and if you implement that interface, you will be able to uh, work with me in this particular way. Now, the other interesting thing here is we saw that each object can extend a superclass object, but notice you can only do that with one object. You can only have one parent in that universe. You can't have multiple parents. That's called multiple inheritance. That's allowed in some languages, but it gets messy even so. So many languages, modern languages, don't even allow it. Java is one of those. So interfaces are interesting because you can say that you want to implement multiple interfaces. So it's kind of a way around that and it lets us do some useful things. So again, all of this can work together. It can be a very cool example. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our example that we already used Right? We'll take our person, student, teacher, etc. And we already have this working, but let's talk about something that you might want to do through an interface. Um, let's use something that's very orthogonal to this. Right, It's not something that would make sense in a person, student, teacher world. And that is, you know, 
in my system that I'm writing. I'm writing a lot of software. Uh, some of it's about people, some of it might be about payroll, some of it might be about checks, some of it might be about parking passes, I don't know. The college has an awful lot of things, but a lot of these things need to have a way to read and write their data from a file. Now, if they do that, then I can control and actually manage from the outside, manage the file system and pass them various files and they will read and write their data and therefore I can manage all of that data into separate files, same files, whatever. But in order to make this work, there's certain kinds of behaviors that need to be present in those classes so that I can depend on those and use them uh, when I want to go and make all this stuff magically work. So we're going to create not a new class but a new interface and I'm going to call this I which is kind of typical to see a lot of times and I'm going to call it I saveable so I'm saying look if you want to support me in this if you want to implement this I saveable behavior it's a great idea to do it and then I can make magic stuff happen from outside if you'll just do that so we're creating this interface called I saveable now, in this interface, what might we want to do? What are some things, some key things that we probably want to make this interface do? Well, the interface itself doesn't do anything, right? It's actually just a bunch of contracts that says, hey, if you do these things, I can make magic happen. So here is a list of the things that you need to do. Now, again, it would be very good for you to do Java Docs. Uh, forgive me for not taking the time to fill that in just at the moment for the demo. Uh, but let's take this example and let's create a method called public. And then I'm going to return a Boolean in this case just for fun. And that Boolean is going to express whether the operation succeeded or failed. So you have a way to communicate back, which we could always do through uh, exceptions. But let's just say we want to do that. And I want you to have a way to write a file. And then I'm going to pass you a file. And then you're going to know that you know if you do that thing, I want you to be able to do that. And then I want you to also be able to read a file. And I'm going to pass you a file. So if I pass you a file and tell you to go write yourself with write file, you're going to be able to do that and you're going to be able to, if I pass you a file to be able to read data out of the file, you're going to dump all your data. Now, notice that we're not specifying the body, much like we did with abstract methods, we're not specifying the body at all. So we don't know how people are going to implement this in different classes, it doesn't matter. What we say is, look, as long as you know how to read and write your data to a text file, great. You do that when called upon to do it, and we'll handle the rest outside of that. So that is the start of our interface. Now, in order to compile it, of course, we know we need a couple of imports. So we're going to need Java io.file, right? And then what else are we going to need? Well, we're not going to figure this out till later, uh, but remember that when you deal with files, it's very typical that you have to remember to uh, tell it that you're going to throw something. So we're going to have to say throws file not found exception because as soon as one of those uh, one of those methods tries to read or write out of that file if it can't find it it's going to throw that exception so we know we're going to need to do that and then we're going to need to java io file not found exception cool now that's going to compile it should be happy that's all that goes in an interface which is very interesting it's the i savable interface and you must have these two methods Often the interfaces have a lot more methods, but let's say for now that this is a, a very good start. And of course, you would want to provide good Java docs uh, documentation on it because people are now depending on that code and needs to know they're going to need to know what to do with those and what all the parameter mean. So that is a great start for our ex our interface. Now let's think about for a second where we'd want to implement that. We could certainly go and implement it in student and in teacher. That's, that's certainly true. Uh, so let's just uh, think about that a little bit with teacher. Let's say, what would we, where would we put that in teacher and what's it going to look like? Well, notice we are going to have teacher extends person and then we could also say not only that, but we could say it implements I savable. 
right? So that is a certain, certainly a way to do that. You could say the person implements I savable. And we could start in writing stuff from the teacher, but we'd find pretty quickly, hey, you know what? A person has some stuff that is specific, you know, very generic to a person. We're going to want to take advantage of that as well. So rather than just starting here, why don't we actually come up to person and say person extends, or not send, sorry, implements I savable. If you had other interfaces, you would just list them here after a comma. Now, right away, this is fun, and it's going to say, when we try to compile it, it's going to say everything seems fine. Well, why? Because it's this is not a concrete class. This is an abstract class. So, of course, it's not actually doing any of the work. It doesn't have to actually implement anything from iSavable. But when we now go and try to compile these guys, it'll certainly say, hey, you've got some stuff. This is a concrete class. You've got to go implement these things out of iSavable. But as I said, we're going to see that pretty that, that it might be pretty nice to uh, have person do some of its stuff first so that we can rely on that first. So how about we implement something like this? Let me just paste it in and we can take a quick look at it. So I've pasted in, I've made a big banner heading that said, hey look, here's all the stuff that iSavable is going to ask of me. And we have provided, even this is in person in the abstract class, we have still provided some very basic stuff. Now I haven't really done much with write file, but read file I've I've put in some stuff that's kind of good support starting material so you can understand what it would look like. So of course I throw file not found exception. I have the proper imports at the top and then you can see some stuff that I'm going to do. First line here is, hey, person, um, uh, of course I'm pasting in out of teacher so that's not good. Let me try again. Okay, that's better. So person, the person implementation looks something like this. When I'm asked to read a file and I'm past the file, I'm going to start and create a new scanner object for uh, associated with that file. And then I'm going to set the ID. I'm going to call set ID, set name, and set email with things that I find in that file. Now notice, in this particular case, person stored things one per line. Doesn't have to. That's the way it decided to implement the read file and the write file. But each object could choose as long as it does the thing that it knows how to do and handles the methods, then that's great. So you'll see that re that a person now has a basic implementation of read file and write file, so it in fact will compile and be fine. Uh, the only thing is, of course, I need to have my imports, and that's not very much of a surprise. I'm going to need to have this, Java IO file, and Java IO file not found exception. Cool. Now I think that'll compile. Uh, needs to be scanner too, of course. We need all these things. And we say import Java util scanner. Cool. All right, so now I believe it'll compile. Cool. So now notice that person only has a limited amount of data. It only knows ID, name, and email, but that's okay. It's nice that it knows that part and we can rely on that. So now back to what I was going to say before, and that is in teacher, now, teacher, if we try to compile it, it's fine because it it has inherited from person. Person did provide some methods for those things, for read file and write file, so that's perfectly fine. I don't have to actually implement them here if I'm happy with the ones that are uh, implemented by my parent class, by my super class. But I'm not quite satisfied because I like that it's helped me out with the basics, but I don't like that it hasn't been specific enough. So just as an example, I'm going to say, well, when I want to go and read and file and write the file, um, it's nice that I am, oh, I pasted in the wrong thing again, sorry. Okay, so here we go. So when I go to do read file or write file, the first thing I'm going to do is call the super class. I'm in teacher now, so I'm going to say, hey, person class, go do your thing first. You do your writing first, and then I'm going to add the rest of the stuff after you. So we let person handle it however it handles it, and then teacher can handle the writing of the rest of the stuff, which is pretty cool. We're using inheritance in a smart way along with our interface. Same thing with reading, right? I say, hey, I'm going to call the super class to do its reading first, create a new scanner, and then I'm going to have to read out things, uh, read in things here. So I zero out my course list, and then I go and read the count that I've put in the file. On a, Again, I'm assuming it's tokenized, so it's a line. Oh, it's an integer. And then I go and get uh, courses, one per line, and I add them to the array. So you'll see the method here 
each of the classes can decide, do I want to put stuff on one line? Do I want to, you know, separate it out? Just use a token separator of a space? Do I want to do something else fancy? It doesn't really matter because they have implemented the interface as asked. Now the cool thing we could do is if we wanted to in main, and of course we have a few things that we still need. We forgot that teacher needs these. So there's our imports. Okay, so now teacher should compile. Cool. So now everything should compile pretty well. And we'd put the same in student, right? We'd add the same kind of support in student that we did in teacher. And then in main, had, uh, if we wanted to, we could create now arrays of things, arrays of objects, but we could actually use the uh, I saveable as if it were an object type and we could create an array of those things and then we could have it do have it do its work on those objects. So it's pretty cool that you can treat them that way and you can uh, do very much similar to what we've done here with an array of persons. You can have an array of I saveable objects, in other words objects that support I saveable and you can then read and write them. And again, we could decide, like this main program could say, hey, I'm gonna have everybody read and write their stuff into one file, and then when I go to read it back, I'll just have them do it in that same order. Or I could pass them different files and have them stored, and, and I could name them. Notice the naming and all of that is not specified in those impl in the implementation of those interfaces. It's all controlled outside, in this case in, cl uh, case in main. So we have a lot of options of what we can do here based on the data that's provided and this is what now our object diagram looks like. You'll notice that person implements iSavable. Now remember, we could come up with other things, other thing, other kinds of behaviors that we want these things to do, and we would make a choice. Do I need to put them somewhere in the inheritance hierarchy? Do they make sense to be part of a person and a student and a teacher? For instance, I implement a cell phone number. Well, yeah, probably that goes in person because students and teachers are all going to have that. Uh, so think carefully about each of those behaviors, and if you come up with behaviors that don't make sense to go in that hierarchy, then you can make another interface, and person could implement implement an additional interface or any other subclasses could if that made sense. But that's a quick look at how interfaces work and the fact that really it's just a set of contracts that say, hey, as long as you implement these things, I'll be able to do some neat stuff with you from the outside. You won't even be aware of all the magic. As long as you do these things, I'll be able to use you in a really neat way. So that is a quick look at what interfaces bring to the party. Now there's a lot of interesting material that you could uh, look up on this. There's some great uh, stuff in your book about how uh, you can go down a path and think that inheritance is right and then change your mind and go with an interface. So that's, that's an option. There are some other things that are here in the reference materials if you want to look up these sites. But if you look up inter interfaces and inheritance, you'll see some different kinds of examples here. And and, uh, and hopefully those will be useful in addition to what you found in the book. Again, it takes some time, it takes some thought. You'll have to practice with these things and take uh, careful thought about the design behind them in order to make the right choices. But I wanted to give you at least a little clue as to how interfaces are going to work and how to use them. That brings us to the end of this demo. Uh, we may yet have another one because we have another topic which is sort of outside and different than these, uh, but that brings us to the end of our interface presentation. Please let me know if you have questions and I appreciate you watching the video.